Welcome to Biblical Perspectives on Aging, the podcast where you and your church will find answers to the difficult questions that arise as we grow older. On behalf of Baptist Homes and Healthcare Ministries, this is your host, Dr. Andy Brams. One of the great joys is to be able to introduce our leadership team to our board. Um, you know, as you, you've heard a little bit already. Okay, can you all hear? Okay. So as you've already heard, uh, even the, the Brown gift really began with a very positive experience on the campus of the Arcadia Valley Baptist Home. And the heart of this ministry takes place where we deliver the care. Uh, we have the privilege and blessing to be able to serve at the corporate level, uh, but we have a team of administrators who have been through the fire. I want to just once again introduce our administrators. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them, and then we are going to engage in a uh, panel discussion. Uh, I'm being joined by our Vice President for Workforce Engagement. So, Tammy, you're going to be joining me in this time together. Uh, but we have with us Sherry Snyder. Sherry has been 38 years with Baptist Homes of Arcadia Valley. Uh, during that time, she began working in the front office and then uh, has progressed. She was, uh, you've been an administrator for 20, 25 years that she has served that campus. So uh, thank the Lord for her work there and for her time. Then we have Derek Pam. Derek is the administrator at our Ashland mm -hmm. campus. Derek began his career at Baptist Homes as part of our advancement team, specifically tasked with helping to raise the uh, awareness and funding for the Ashland campus. In June of 2020, Derek assumed the role of the administrator of this campus and is now shepherding the construction project that is taking place uh, on campus. Next to Derek, we have Reed McBroom. Reed, uh, I mentioned him earlier in our introduction, Reed uh, is what I call a God story. So we were looking for an administrator starting back in November for the Chillicothe campus. Uh, Sherry Snyder was serving as the interim administrator at that time. And we started putting out the feelers and the, the quality of the applica applicants um, was discouraging to say the least. The typical applicant for that position had been a nursing home administrator for about 15 years and had at least 15 jobs. Um, and there was just very little continuity of experience. Um, when you started to follow up on them, you'd go to their Facebook page and they said, well, I'm a Baptist. And, and you go to the Facebook page and there they are at a bar with their, you know, their drinks. Uh, I guess two things that really come at me. One, they don't think that we're going to look at their social media page. We do. And then secondly, um, just the desperation of them trying to find a different position. We just did not get quality applicants. And so uh, we were about ready to hire a national search firm. And on the day that we pulled the ad for the Chillicothe campus, uh, Reed contacted us about the position. Well, the irony is he had been looking at that role for months and months, but he was waiting to graduate from Truman State University with his master's degree. And so uh, he had just wrapped up his, his master's and had in his final year of studies felt a transitional call from maybe hospital to more long-term care. And so we began that conversation and had the great privilege of calling him as the administrator for the Chillicothe campus. Just a, an exciting story. And he's from the Chillicothe area and uh, grew up there. Um, Well-known family in the community, just a strong uh, relationship with the local church there. So we're very excited to have Reed on our team. Pam has been with the Baptist Homes team for about a year and a half, but has over 30 years of experience in long-term care. Uh, much of that was with Health Systems Incorporated. Health Systems Incorporated is the company that we purchased the two recent acquisitions from. 
So she knows them quite well. Pam has served in dietary, social services, uh, probably just about every non-professional nursing career in uh, long-term care. And about uh, a year ago, uh, we challenged each of the administrators to identify someone that could be in their farm system, someone that we might want to be grooming to become an administrator. And so Sonia Newton, the administrator at the campus, uh, identified uh, Pam as that person that we ought to invest in and start uh, grooming as an administrator. At that time, I don't think I would have ever envisioned that uh, Sonia would uh, resign, but she did uh, resign so her and her husband could do some travel and mission trips in their <laughs> retirement. And lo and behold, Pam is now ready and, and ready to, to go in that, that role. So um, she served as the acting kind of administrator during a season where she was qualified to sit for her nursing home administrator's license. Uh, she, we at that time brought in a short-term interim administrator, Sue Joslin. And when Pam took her uh, state and uh, national exam, she passed them the first time and so we're so excited that she's joined us at uh, the Ozark campus. Uh, definitely was what we would call the staff and resident choice. So Pam, we, we welcome you. Kate Flynn. Kate, I, I met her the first time through the window. We were looking at Independence campus. It was in our early days. I think it was Ron and I that uh, we drove over there. And what we discovered is when we arrived, Nobody from the seller had let really anybody know other than Kate that the facility was for sale. So we're kind of like knocking on the window because they're in COVID shutdown and, and Kate comes out, and, well, nobody really knows that they're selling it, but me. Okay. So, you know, we have to act like we're, you know, we're vendors or something, but uh, we, we got to visit with Kate. And I remember after that, uh, that very first meeting, Ron and I were thinking, well, you know, if we, if the Lord opens the door and we acquire the facility, Kate may be somebody that we just want to keep in our, our team. Uh, she just had a sweet spirit. You could just tell her love for the residents. And um, so we're just so excited that she's a part of our Baptist home family. So we're going to have a panel discussion and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tammy to uh, get us open with our first question. Okay. We're going to start with Kate. Um, tell us what do you love most about your campus? Independence Campus has such a warm family feeling. Uh, being a part of the Kansas City area, we um, are what branched off of it. And they're just, to say it lightly, there's a lot of competition in long-term care uh, for anyone that is familiar with long-term care. And we go above and beyond to make sure that all of our residents are treated as family. And anyone who tours, anyone who has been somewhere else knows automatically that every single one of our residents is loved. I have worked in other facilities um, before and again with a for-profit organization. And I just love the fact that even before we had the opportunity to be purchased, our Independence Campus, everyone, resident to employee, is on the same page, that everyone matters, everyone has a drive to be better and to be as a unit. So I, I do love that, that is something that um, I aspire to be and make sure everyone holds up that same motto, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Sherry. Can you pass the mic down to Sherry? And she can answer that same question for us. What do you love most about your campus? Besides its beauty, and its historic uh, setting. Um, the thing that I really appreciate, and you know, Kate talked about a sense of family. At, at Ironton, we have a lot of, of um, residents that come from all over. But the beautiful thing is they get there and they're like, I know you, we went to church here together. And, and so there's this connection this, um, among them from churches that they've, they already know people, even when they come and they think that they don't. And so there's a, there's a great sense of family, like Kate was talking about, not just um, because they're at the Baptist home and, and, and they become part of the Baptist home family, but 
they have connections even prior to coming to the Baptist home that they might not even have known about. It, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Derek, how about you? I think the thing that I love about our campus in Ashland is just the opportunity that we have. We're developing right now, but there's so much potential. The area is desperate for more care in this area, and um, we have a brand new facility and uh, construction's continuing, of course. But I love the, the residents we have. Actually, they've been helping do the salesmanship on it. And um, <laughs> we have one of our first residents in the apartment building has already brought her two best friends from uh, actually from South St. Louis. So um, you, you have the opportunity to craft your own community from the ground up. Thank you. All right. Well, let me ask uh, Pam, what, tell us about a resident who brings a smile to your face. I would have to say that would be, um, this man is amazing. Um, when I transitioned from social services to the um, administrator role, he came to my office, he sat with me, he encouraged me, he told me that he was going to make sure I was successful. He prays with me every week. He know, I know that if I need something and I'm having a day where I just need a little uplift and a little encouragement, I know that I can seek out and um, he, he's, my, uh, he's my rock. He really is. Thank you so very much. I'm going to ask the same question of Reed. Tell us about a resident that brings a smile to your face. Um, so I think the first thing I found out from day one is you don't get to choose your favorite residents. They choose you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty true. That's I pretty have a true. couple standing appointments um, daily with residents, one at 715 and the other one depending on the day. So um, the one, one of those really brings a smile and a joy to my life. She is originally from Holland. Um, so if I have to quote some of her, it's going to be in a bad Polish accent. So please, um, excuse me for that, but she is one of our surprisingly more difficult residents. Um, it really depends on her mood. She is either a joy to be around or she absolutely hates everyone. Um, there's really no in between either. Um, she's found a particular disliking to our pastor, Steve which I find hilarious. Um, <laughs> I can't exactly quote uh, most of the things she says to him. <laughs> but, um, the other day she was in a great mood, the best mood I've probably seen her in. And she uh, rolled down and gave him a kiss on the cheek. And I was informed of this a couple seconds before she rolled into my office. And I confronted her about it. I, I was kind of upset. You know, I'm, I'm her guy. And she said, well, news certainly travels fast around here. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she apologized and promised me it would never happen again. <laughs> uh, we've gone on several walks um, throughout the building. Um, I'm the only one that's allowed to take her to lunch. She has given me that authority. Um, but yeah, she is a great joy to my life and definitely puts a smile on my face every day. And then finally, I'd like to ask the same question of Sherry Snyder. You know, there are so many residents that are prayer warriors. And one of those is from the Tower Grove Baptist Church in St. Louis. And so she, she regularly tells me, that she is praying for me. And I know that she is. She, she really is a prayer warrior. Um, but I've always said that I have the best job in the world because I get to laugh every day. And this week, I encountered a resident in the hall. And I'm going to set the stage for this if I can real quick. I don't know how much time we got, but, you know, I, I talk a lot. But so, so anyway, so I'm walking down the hall, and if I, said, if I said to you, this is the day that the Lord hath made, you would respond how? Be glad in it. Okay. So if I said to you, hey, hey, good looking, you would respond, what you got cooking? So I used my pretend microphone and I said, 
hey, hey, good looking. And then I give her. What you got? And she says, hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness. I have a new generation of residents now, and I'm going to have to up my game. <laughs> But I get to That's laugh great. every day. I mean, <laughs> there's not just one resident. There's, I mean, I laugh every day. Great. That's a great story. Pam, tell us what has been the most challenging aspect of the coronavirus pandemic in your facility? Without a doubt, it's the emotional distress that it's put our residents in. Um, them not being able to see families, um, watching um, their peers pass, be sick. Um, having to be um, kept in their rooms for, you know, a long period of time, not being able to socialize, that, that has definitely been the most difficult part is the emotional distress that it's put on our, our residents. Reed, how about you? I know you had. Yeah, I would say very similar things to what Pam just enlightened, you know, about the residents. And as far as me personally, I came in um, during our second round of COVID with this Delta variant now. And um, so we were under lockdown. So the first three weeks of my training with Sherry in the facility, I ha didn't even have access to some of the residents. I had no idea how the facility normally operates. Um, you know, the dining services weren't available. They were delivering it to rooms. We didn't have the salad bar. Um, we were so short staffed because they were getting COVID. Um, so I think that's been one of the biggest challenges for me was trying to figure out what normal is at the facility. Okay. Kate, how about you? I know you weren't part of the Baptist homes during that time, but I'm sure it was still difficult. So besides getting birthed by fire with my last and first survey, I get not last, but the survey that we just went through, yes, is I had just passed my administrator license at the beginning of uh, 2020 in January, and I was birthed by fire again for the 2020 pandemic. Overall, it's just the, the fear, the unknown. When is it over? What are your answers? And to be able to look back at residents, staff, and family and not have an answer, that was an endeavor that we all had to come across. Um, and as well as what both of uh, Reed and Pam touched on, the distress, the emotions, and having to, even down to explain, I get to go home and I get to see my loved ones, but your loved ones can't come in. That, that was very heartbreaking to see and watch. So we're very excited to try and get the pandemic over and build from the unknown and the fear that's behind us. Thank you. The next two questions we're gonna be asking to all five of our panelists. So uh, let me start with the first question and we'll just start with Sherry or start with Kate and we'll go down the, down the list here. Uh, what would you like churches to know about your campus? What would you like churches to know about your campus? I would like churches to know that we have a new opportunity to come in and be a part of something, a new movement, a new prosperous area that we have not been able to be a part of before. Independence campus, um, just as simple as a pastor. We don't have someone on staff as that to be able to bring campuses and churches together and the community we have been silent to say the least. We're not a part of that. So I would love to let churches know that we have an open door, that we're very excited to be a part of this spiritual lead and share and believe in everyone um, and to go down that path. I would like our churches to know that um, we, we couldn't do it without their support. Our churches and our community are so important to, um, you know, the volunteerism, the donations, um, the things they do, the ladies groups do. They, they're just amazing and their support just means the world to us. 
As far as what I'd like churches to know, um, my mentor, Sherry, actually pointed this out to me, so I hope I don't steal her answer. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, that's why I sat in the middle, so I could get either side. Had time to prepare. <laughs> but that the Baptist home is more than just a ministry for our residents. Um, I've really found out that it's a ministry for the staff as well. Um, you know, you can just see God's love in our building and, you know, our delivering Christ-like care to the elderly is our mission and our vision and all that stuff, that it's also a gift to work there. Um, and I think that is a, something I really try to sell when interviewing. Um, you know, our love is not just given to the residents. It's received back through pastors that are in there, um, you know, in our homes that help with the message, can point out, you know, certain things to Pastor Steve that he brings to the table um, and all their prayers. So that's what I like. To remember. So the one thing I think I'd like churches to remember about Ashland is even though we're under construction, we always talk about that. We are open. We have, by the end of the month, we're going to have 33 residents on campus. We are open. We are there. We are hoping to become more and more part of the community in central Missouri. And you know what? We have a lot of prayer warriors right there on campus. So not only can we hopefully be a place for people in the churches to come live, but I would love it if we were had some prayer requests shared from our local churches. We would love to be praying for your churches in the area. And I think that would be really beneficial for my residents as well as for our churches. You know, residents of the Baptist home, by and large, if they had their druthers, they would be home. But they have care, care needs that require them, that, 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 that they need the care that we provide. It is traumatic for them when they have to leave their home and their church. Amen. The thing I want churches to remember is remember your members at the Baptist home because they miss you. They miss their church. Um, so, so don't forget. I mean, you, I can't tell you how excited they become when they have contact from their church. I know COVID has been very difficult. I didn't get to answer that question, but, but they have been, they have been isolated, not just from each other, but from their church. And they have missed that. You know, we, we have campus pastors and we still have church, but they miss their church. And, I, and, and they need to know that. Thank you. Amen. True. So we're going to go back down the row. How would you like board members to be praying for you, both as the administrator and oh. for your campus? I'm so glad I get this one first. <laughs> So I, I would answer that by saying, we, for, for me personally, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I want, to, I want to deal with residents well. I want to deal with staff well. I want to hire well. Um, we need employees, and we need employees who, are, who will love old people. With that said... I have to add something that came to me last night about 8.30. I received a phone call. My director of nurses called me and she was hysterical. She was distraught, crying her eyes out. She said, I have COVID. Her mother had been to church and had picked it up at church, had given it to my director of nurses' daughter, who's about 10, and the daughter brought it home to my director of nurses. And she was beside herself thinking that she potentially has brought that into our building. Fortunately, has been hyper diligent about wearing masks and about all the things, all taking all the precautions. And so even so, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think that we're at risk at the Baptist home, but we could be. It, it, it is not outside the realm of possibility. So 
for, for my campus, those are the things that I would ask you to pray for. For the Ashland campus, uh, yesterday in the morning, we had an ambulance roll onto campus. And that makes my heart sink every time I see that because, of course, we don't have the ability to care for somebody once they go beyond the independent side of things. Um, and so on, not only that, we have another resident who's been in long-term rehab in Jefferson City at one of the uh, nursing homes here. So uh, first off, please be praying for a resident who, who is being checked out at the hospital today um, for his recovery, but also praying that we can care for our residents and that their health continues over the course of the project. We know it's going to take a while. Uh, we have a good project in motion, but in the meantime, if you can be praying for our residents that their health continues. Of course, you know, the 38 year veteran takes wisdom and doesn't leave it for um, the rest of us <laughs> that have just started. So you I need some of that. Prayer read. It's mind. okay. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take patience as well. Um, you know, being new to the long-term care realm, um, I think that's what I've learned is sometimes you just have to be patient. And, you know, depending on where they are um, with their orientation level at any given moment, you know, it may take them two minutes to finish that final thought. Um, so I think patience for me, um, patience for all of us, waiting for this pandemic to eventually end um, you know, whenever that happens and patience for my staff members that are also working with the residents every day. It goes without saying that definitely need prayer for our staff and our residents, but every day I pull onto our campus and I look at that building and I look at, you know, how blessed I am to get to be there. And I thank God every day. Thank you for letting me work at the Baptist home. Um, a year ago, I had no, I would never have thought in a million years I would be an administrator. I've had people offer to have me pursue that um, for years. Not something I ever thought I would ever do. I was so content being the social worker and serving my residents in that capacity. So I would like for, the, for you guys to pray that I can lead that campus in a Christ-like manner every day to do the best that I can by my residents and my staff. It is a, you know, I know all of our campuses are great. I however am partial to the Ozark campus. <laughs> um, but just just pray for me to lead in, in a Christ-like way that I need to do and, and to continue on the course that has been set before me. Um, help me to, you know, lead lead my residents to an understanding of why we have, why we're going through what we're going through our staff, you know, you know, why we're, why we have a shortage of staff and my family members who just sometimes can't, sorry, just can't sometimes wrap their head around why I can't let them in the building to visit their loved ones. Um, so pray for those families for, you know, understanding also with, as we get through this COVID. Building on everything that my coworkers have said is independence as a whole. Perhaps we need prayed for, for our unfiltered manners. <laughs> uh, we are beyond honest, yet we're very humble. And with this opportunity, we have been so grateful and blessed that we're given this and for me personally, as well as a campus, I would say, pray for us for growth. And I don't mean by census or superficial items, but growth in religion, growth in prayer and worship. We have been lacking that. We don't have a stronghold in that. And we are very excited um, to have that a part of our daily lives. So that's great. I want to say thank you for the panelists and stay seated. I'm going to ask uh, Spencer Hudson, our church relations specialist, to come. And Spencer, would you lead us in prayer for our administrators before they are seated?
Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we have had the opportunity to hear from the hearts of those that have been called to serve our residents and staff in all of our geographic locations. And <clears throat> a number of times I teared up listening to uh, the sincerity of these uh, these men and women of God that uh, that love their their calling so much, and we pray for them. They they have uh, they have given us specific needs uh, that they feel and that they desire uh, your intervention in their lives, of wisdom and care and uh, ability to uh, to grow in uh, the spiritual influence of uh, residents and families and and many things in between. And so, Father, it is at this time that we come and we just ask that your, your blessings be on them, that you would continue to guide them daily, uh, keep them mindful of uh, the calling you have on their life and the, uh, the purpose of what they're doing, even when uh, things that are uh, unforeseen happen, and that happens, I'm sure, daily uh, on the campuses, but uh, let them know that uh, that they need to be strong and courageous, as Brother Don shared with us earlier, and that their strength uh, comes from you. Uh, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator. Thank you for joining us for this interview today. Baptist Homes and Healthcare Ministries has provided Christ-like care to the aging since 1913. To learn more about the biblically informed resources and solutions provided by Baptist Homes and Healthcare Ministries, go to www.thebaptisthome, that's all one word, .org. Again, www.thebaptisthome.org. You will find links to previous podcasts, a growing number of church resources and detailed information about residential and long-term care communities. Until next time, this is your host, Dr. Andy Brams, asking you to be a voice for the aging.